Oddly enough, the tail end of this very long book tour that I've been on, which has been so remarkable in itself, I must say, and to end here in Chicago that I was telling Heidi, I love so much. I wish to God any of my kids had gone to Northwestern, so maybe it's just... <laughs> or the University of Chicago, maybe it's just me. Maybe I've got to go to one of those schools. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there, but it is the end of a, of a very long odyssey that this all has been for me, that maybe I'm starting to feel it, but this was the beginning of it. My mother passed away on my 65th birthday, and I'll be 72 in November, so it was seven years ago. And when she passed away, I thought I had done all the right things, the things you hear you, sh you should do, you, you have the conversations that you postponed having, you, you, you had meetings together and, and, and healings together and time together. And, and, and then when she was gone, I felt deeply disquieted. And it wasn't just grieving, surely I was, but it was something else, something was missing. And I felt an urgency to know what it was, like there was something growing on me, and a, a festering wound, and I couldn't find it, and I didn't know what it was, and every day I got more and more anxious that there was something missing, and I, I couldn't find it. Serendipitously, at the same time, a friend of mine who is the co-founder of the Omega Institute in upstate New York, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's an extraordinary place of learning and a beautiful campus of retreats and classes and seminars. And uh, like, for instance, every year, they would have a four-day seminar just once a year called Women in Power, where they would invite the most extraordinary women from all over the world to come and talk about how they got there and what they feel and what's next. And, and one year they had all the Nobel Prize winning women. They all came to school. Yeah. The ones that could get out of their country. There were some that obviously were under house arrest. And this year my, my friend, right after my mother had passed away, called and said, are you coming? And I said, absolutely, I'm coming. I can't wait. I'm going to sit, you know, somewhere in the middle and to the edge and, and, and just can't wait. And she said, good, because I want you to give the keynote address. <laughs> and I said, what are you, I can't give the keynote address. I can't possibly give a keynote address. I, do, I resent the fact you asked me to give a keynote address. I, I have nothing to say. And she said, yes, you do, Sally. <laughs> And something struck me. Yes, I did. I really did have something to say. So I wrote a speech. I think they thought it would be a nice little 15 minute speech that said, turn to your neighbor and introduce yourself. And, and the cafeteria opens at seven. And... That's not what I wrote. I wrote an hour long, raw, personal, deeply private speech. And I, I stood at the podium just quaking, shaking like a leaf. And that night, what I, what I felt from this, this, this faceless, unfamiliar, and yet completely familiar audience, something that I have felt a connection to all my adult life, what I felt from them to me, from me to them, just said, this is it. You have to find a way to write the story. You have to find a way to get into the story. You have to find your own story. So I, I went away from that going, okay, well, that's just a fine idea, Sally, but how, how, would, I, how would I even do that? And through the years since I've been in the business for the last 54 years or something, I'd have agents come to me and with wonderful publishers saying, we think you should write a memoir. We know just who to write it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would go, well, mm, no, I don't think so because you just have no idea. Because I have no idea, really. So I thought, well, I can't just be alone in this. I can't just say I'm going to be in a room now for the next six or seven years. Don't anybody call me. <laughs> I, I looked up some of the writers I most regard in a, in a very bold moment. 
Uh, I looked up, well, I liked Elizabeth Stroud quite a lot and, and, and James Smiley and, and arguably Angela's Ashes by Frank McCord is one of the great memoirs ever written. So I thought, well, who represents these people? They must have somebody on their team. And uh, oddly enough, it was the same person, Molly Friedrich in Midtown, New York, a wonderful literary agent. So again, still hanging on to this very bold moment, I, I emailed her uh, on her website. Dear Miss Friedrich, my name is Sally Friedrich. I have been an actor for 54 years. All my adult life, I have been in the public eye. Yada, 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 yada. I would love to have seen her. And, and she, still, she still has that email. And so she wrote back to me in, in like a week later, and she said, she said, well, Sally, thank you so much for reaching out to me. This is just, I'm both so very flattered, and I don't think we're a match. Oh. So I went, okay. She said, but I'd love to read your speech. So I said, okay, sent it right to her. Then she wrote me back and she said, Sally, um, perhaps we could meet 